is Robert Montgomery speaking. From the nation's capital has come a new epic of American courage and sacrifice, America's greatest adventure in polar exploration. This is a tale of men and of their willingness to endure hardship and risk life above and beyond the call of duty in the service of country and humanity. For brevity, the sequence of events has occasionally been rearranged. The President's Cabinet approved the expedition. As Secretary of the Navy, James V. Forrestal explains the reasons for the enterprise. There is only one untouched reservoir of raw materials left in the world, and that's in the region known as Antarctica, an area larger than the combined area of the United States and Europe. The American government is sending a naval expedition to that region. The purpose is to train our Navy in polar operations so that it may better perform its function of preserving the peace upon the seven seas of the world. Beyond that, the American government is seeking to do its share in the discovery and the release to the world of the unknown treasures of Antarctica in the interest of all mankind. On the water, the great PBM makes her takeoff run. Her jet assist bottles blast. She lifts quickly into the air and circles the Kuratuk once. Jet assist bottles, their work done, are dropped and make a salvo splash. The pilot, Commander David E. Bunger, wipes his frosted windshield, a constant source of trouble in polar flying. He is over the Shackleton Ice Shelf, named for the great English explorer who kept returning to the Antarctic until death so often escaped, kept its rendezvous with him. The smooth shelf roughened. Dark rocks, called noon attacks, appear above the ice. Then rugged mountain ranges as far as the eye can see. Bunger leans forward in amazement. His eyes have caught a sudden and unbelievable change in scenery. The universal white has turned to chocolate brown dotted with blue. A cameraman goes into action. 300 square miles of land without snow. Land that might be in New Mexico or Arizona. Pictures alone will prove Bunger has discovered a warm oasis in the shadow of the pole. It is for such supreme moments as this that men brave the hardships of exploration. The astounding, undreamed of fact is that they are over a chain of warm water lakes whose shores, except for small patches, are free of ice and snow. Commander Bunger circles the largest lake in sight, five miles long. He comes in to make a landing. Water temperatures must be recorded samples taken. He finds the water fresh, the temperature 38 degrees Fahrenheit. On the shores are vast deposits of coal and of minerals of the utmost importance to civilization. Operation High Jump completed. Our men have achieved accomplishments unparalleled in the history of discovery. Our central group has flown far beyond the South Pole, mapped one-third million square miles never before seen by man. Our eastern group mapped 3,000 miles of Phantom Coast and charted 40,000 square miles of coastal ocean areas hitherto unknown. Our western group, flying hundreds of air hours, mapped the 4,000-mile Sunset Coast, made the amazing discovery of warm land in Antarctica. In all, the expedition explored more than a million and a half square miles. Our scientists, by use of the radar magnetic detector, have pinpointed fabulous treasures and resources of great significance for all mankind. The men who did the job, Navy, Army, Air Corps, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and scientists, are going Tired men, the rear guard of Admiral Byrd's intrepid 4,000, veterans of the Antarctic, trained to combat the sub-zero enemy of the polar continent. 